Hello, beautiful girls. Today we're going to talk about He's the kind of God that is just in time. I'm so glad you're joining us today, and I'm honored that you would join us. We are going to press into some subjects and verses that are going to change our lives. And so let's dive in. Let's see what God says, because our society is screaming at us. The world around us wants us to stay in a broke down, busted and disgusted way of living. But I'm here to tell you today, you are a woman of God and he has a plan for you. So let's dive in. Let's see what God wants to speak into our lives. So in our time together, we are going to be covering what the Lord wants us to cover. I've been praying for you. I've been asking God, what do you want to say to the girls now? And he's been bringing me to the verses in Jeremiah. And these verses for me are very special because these are my life verses. These are the verses that taught me my foundation, that brought me out of a very broken place. So let's go to Jeremiah 10 through 14. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and I will perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. I want to stop there for a second. 70 years, that is like a lifetime. That is a very long season to be waiting on God. That's a very long time to wait for God to come and rescue and to restore and to take you out of a situation. These people had to trust and they had to sit and they had to wait on God. And you might be frustrated in life. In this moment, you might be going, where is God? I've been asking for you to do something in this circumstance or in this situation or in my living conditions. And yet, God, I'm not seeing you come through. Well, these people had to wait for 70 years. And in verse 11, he picks it up and he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He says, the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil. Ooh, I love that. To give you a future and to give you a hope. Then you will call upon me. You will go and you will pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and you will find me. You will search for me with all of your heart and you will, and I will be found by you. I love that. I will be found by you. And then it says in verse 14, says the Lord, I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you into a place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. You see, the Lord is on the scene in your life, just as he was there for these people. It took 70 years, but God said that he has a peace for them, that he has something for them. I want you to hold on. I want you to wait on God. I want you to not give up. Don't fall apart in the waiting. Don't give up in the broken places. Don't think that God has abandoned you because he has not abandoned you. He is on mission. He is waiting to do what he needs to do in his perfect timing and not ours. And sometimes that's a hard one to swallow. I believe as humanity, we want God to do things on our time. We want it to be in our way, but God is not a God who operates in our time or operates in our way. He is God and he is God alone and he is sovereign and we have to be patient and we have to wait for the peace of God to come into our lives and bring direction. When you feel like God's timeline is being stretched out, have you ever felt like I'm just being stretched and it's just taking longer and longer? I want you to stop and I want you to remind yourself that it is his time and not ours. You know, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9 talks about this, and, and it's talking about the end times. And I love this verse. It says, but you must not forget the one thing, dear friends, talking to believers. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow at his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. You see, these people had to wait 70 years, but I'm here to say, now looking back into this story, the rescuer is on his way. God comes at the right time, in the right moment, in the right season, because his plan will be fulfilled through your life, and your life already has a plan, a God plan, a God-ordained plan. You see, we talked last time in Jeremiah about bringing the word in those, to those captive people and telling them to find peace in the position that they found themselves in. They were in a position they didn't like to be in, but they had to search out peace and who Christ was in it. Let's look at these verses in Jeremiah. Verse 10 is like an announcement of God's coming for them. He's rescuing them from a place that they did not belong. 
They don't belong there, but he knew they were there. He watched them. He knew exactly the position they were in, and he told them to find rest in it. But he's coming for them, and he's coming for us as church, as a church. Listen, we are the bride of Christ. He promised us he's on his way. He is coming. Things around the world are stirring. If you look at prophecies, they are being fulfilled, and God is on his way, church. He's coming for you. We are his bride, and I cannot wait for the day that he returns for us. He has you in mind. Isn't that good news? He has you in mind. He doesn't have not just the person that you think, you know, God uses the pastor or, or God uses, oh, your friend who always has good things. No, he has you in mind. He loves you. We are his daughters and he is a God that needs us to stay in the places that he's called us to. Those are really hard words to hear for some of you because you want to get out of there. You want to run away from the things that maybe you're uncomfortable with, but you have to find him in those places. You have to sow and then you have to multiply and he will fulfill your rest. He will take you to a place of peace and he will take you to a place of rest. In John 14, 1 through 4, I love this verse, but I'm going to actually read it to you in the Message Bible. It says, don't let this rattle you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me, there are plenty of rooms for you in my father's home and that if you weren't so, would I have told you that I am on my way to get a room ready for you? That's good news. Can you imagine what your room looks like? What is God preparing for you in heaven? See, when we get discouraged with the ways of this world and the positions we find ourselves in, the places that we don't want to be, just look to God. Just look to him and know that he is making something better. He's making a way out for you. He's preparing a way. And it says that, and if I am on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and I'll get you so you can live where I live. And you are already know the road that I am taking. You see, this is good news. Keep your heart, keep your mind, and keep your eyes on Jesus. Even in the mundane moments, even in those storms that are raging around you, stay focused on who Christ is in your life and the plan that he has for you and your rescuer will come and deliver you. These verses go on to speak in verse 11. Thoughts of peace and not evil. That just right there gets me going. To give you a future and to give you a hope. All of those are just things that are radical coming from heaven just for you. First off, we can dwell here for a second. This is the God who created every cloud, every weather system in the sky. He formed us and he knows us and he put us in our mother's womb. Every cell, every vein, every hair on our head, every color of our eye, the color of our skin, where we live and who we are a part of. He knew every part of who you are. You are uniquely ordained by heaven. This is the God who numbered the stars in the sky and he knows us. And that to me is incredibly mind blowing. Nobody can promise or deliver good thoughts or a good future or bring you a hope. Not one person on this earth. They can say it. Have you had those boyfriends that are, that are like, oh, I will. I'll do that for you, baby. I'll do that for No, I'm telling you right now, he is going to fail because he's human. You are going to fail because you're human. We are broken people and we cannot promise these things. But the only one that can declare this word and promise it, live up to it and carry it out, his name is Jesus. He promises you good. He promises you hope. He promises you a future. I pray this is blessing your heart today because you might feel like you've been left out. You've been let down, but God has never left you out or let you down. It is time for us to cling back and go back to the one, our first love. His name is Jesus. This is my life verse. I remember way back in the day, I was this young, broken teenage girl. I had been date raped and I ended up having two abortions. I had no self value. I didn't think anyone could ever love me. I was tattered, I was broken, and I was incredibly beat up. I came out of an abusive relationship which I was surprised that I actually lived through because it was so violent. And yet God delivered me right out of that very moment. When he did this for the lost and the broken, he delivered them. He began to put me back together. I was lost. I was broken. He put me back together. He did it for the children of Israel, and he will do it for you today. I don't know what your need is. I don't know what your broken place is. I don't know what all of those things that happen to us in life that begin to tear our hearts down. I want to ask you to just put it back up on the altar and give it back to God and see and watch the rescuer come and deliver you from the broken places that you can't even be delivered from without him because he's your only hope. He's your strength. He's your future. He's your hope. And so I had to learn this. He gently loved me back to life, not because I deserved it at all, but because he rescued me and he had a plan for me. 
I read this verse every day and I reminded myself, I had to read this verse every day. You've got to get into the word of God every day. You've got to learn it for yourself. You've got to reimagine and rethink about the way you used to do life. You have to change it all. And I had to change my stinking thinking. I had to change the way I thought of myself because I hated myself. I didn't love myself. I was so broken. I was so beat up mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And yet I would read this verse over myself every single day. And I had to tell myself that God thought good thoughts towards me, not because I thought good thoughts, but because he did. And I would have to hold to that plan. I had to hold to what his word said. It became my truth. And I can tell you today, I am 42 years old and I am living in every single one of these words spoken in this scripture. I am living and I am fulfilling what God has spoken over me. He has blessed me above what I ever could think or dream or imagine, not because I'm good, but because he's good. And he responded to my broken place. Verse 12 talks about this. Then you will call upon me and you will go and pray and I will listen to you. I love the intimacy of this scripture that God is like, you have to call upon me. There's another verse in James where it says, seek me and you will find me. You see, God wants us to run after him with everything. And in this verse, he says that you will pray. What what is prayer? Prayer is just talking to God. It's just having a conversation with him. And I will listen to you and you will find me. And you will seek me and you will find me. And when you search for me with all of your heart, you see, God doesn't want just partial heart. He doesn't want partial commitment in our lives. God is not asking us to be that part-time Christian. There's really just not such a thing. And God is saying, you know, I, I actually reminds me of a story. My kid was talking to me about some of his friends at school. And he goes, oh, my friend says that he's, he's half Christian. And I said, you, what? And he goes, I, what is a half Christian? And he goes, well, mom, I told him there's no such thing. Well, you're right. There is no such thing. It's all or nothing. God is asking for all of our heart. And when we give him everything, that means you're good, you're bad, you're ugly, you're wonderful, you're amazing, you're extravagant parts of yourself. God takes it all and he begins to change and work out everything he initially created you to be. You see, the world comes in and robs us, steals us, taints us, stirs up our thought processes, and um, honestly, steals every part of who we are. But yet God had a perfect plan for you and he's getting us back on track. You have to want to change though. This is like where the rubber meets the road. You have to want to change. If you want to keep living in your broken, disgusted life, keep doing it. But I'm here to tell you today, you have to want change, and then you have to actually do something about it. You can't just want it. You have to do something. You have to want to be free from the torment, from the oppression, from the enemy in your life. The places that you are comfortable in, God is going to get you uncomfortable and out of. I was recently talking to one of the girls here at the church, and and she had gotten saved, and I was just expressing to her how proud I am of her, because she went through the salvation, then she went through discipleship, and now she's just rocking it for Christ, and we were having this conversation, and she told me, I can't go back. I had to go all in. I was so sick of being defeated every day and allowing it. I had to change something inside of me. And Pastor Jess, I had to change big. And so today I'm challenging you to begin to change big because God has big plans for you because he has an awesome future for you. And don't miss out on what God created for you because you're on your own timeline, because you're on your own plan. Don't Put God in your plan. Make God's plan your plan. You see, my story of rescue began when I sought God and I prayed and he answered me. In that very moment where I thought I was going to die, I truly thought I was going to die. I cried out to God in that moment. I heard him give me direction on what to do. The direction did not seem like it would be the right direction. In fact, I kind of fought with God in that moment. Like, if I do that, he's going to kill me. And the Lord said, just do what I told you to do. And all I know is that I did what God said to do, and there was an angel banging on that door and ripped me right out of that moment of violent abuse that I was supposed to die from. You see, God came and he rescued me at the last moment because I called upon his name. He gave me direction. I heard his voice and I followed him out of hell. And I'm telling you today what he did for me, he wants to do for you. I don't know what your situation is, but he does. He loves you so much. And if you, if he did this for me, and he did this for the people in the Bible, he's going to do it for you. He loves you. So seek him and take time to find him. Take time to learn how to change the patterns of your life. Take time that 
that you put into Christ, that he will lead you, he will walk you through things, he will change your thought process. You know, we get into these thought processes and the Bible seems so antiquated and outdated, but actually the Bible says that it is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that his word does not change, and that it is applicable to every part of our lives. And so let's not negate that, but let's dive in and become all that God has called us to be. Seeking him takes time. You will have to learn how to change these patterns. It will take time to follow Christ. It will take time to learn how to change your direction and your ways. But I promise you that if you follow God and you do things his way, he will incredibly blow your mind. He will give you grace to do it. He will give you grace to change. He will give you grace to endure the process of change. That's because he loves you so much. Seeking God is something every believer has to do on a daily basis. It's a faith warfare. It is that good fight of faith we talk about. It's a quest for seeking God and his intensity beyond what is ordinary. Desperation for Christ is what it requires. This is a will that will take diligence on your part. It will take a tenacious will to follow Christ, no matter what the cost is. When you lose your friends, when you lose your family members, you serve God at all costs. It reminds me of the scripture that he says, take up your cross and follow me. This will bring a supernatural result in your life. When you do this, you will have supernatural things happening all around you. You will be used by God. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will speak and people will hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and people will come to the Lord. Your life is not your own. You are on mission and he has a plan for it. You see, you want to live an extraordinary life and a supernatural life, not a broke down, busted and disgusted life. It's our choice. And I chose God. I chose to go extreme for him. And he has been amazing in all of it. If you are hearing this and you feel lost, if you feel unlovable, I'm here today to tell you that it's just simply, it's a lie. You're not unlovable and you're not lost. You're actually found by Christ and you are so loved, unconditionally loved. And if you don't know how to change the things in your life that are unpleasing to him, don't worry about it. Come to him as you are, and he will lead you, he will guide you, and he will strengthen you. God loves you with an undeniable love, with an unconditional love, with a love that rescues and brings you value. See, love gave all of himself on that cross. He did it so that you could be free from sin and hell, and a love that is calling you home to have a future with him. The things of the past cannot be what you're defined by any longer. Not any longer. You have a future in Christ. God has made a way and rescued you from generational curses. He's rescued you from pain. He's rescued you from loss. He's rescued you from hatred. He's rescued you from lies. He's rescued you from dev devastation. He is the author of life. He is the one who gives it. He is the one who ordains it. And he is the one who writes it. Not even death could keep him down. That was the last victory and he conquered death. That is the same God who loves you, who has a plan for you, and who is absolutely on your side and on your team. He is your rescuer. He comes at the right moment. His name is Jesus. Today, if you do not know who he is, I want to introduce you to him. If you've never asked him to be the Lord and Savior of your life, this is your moment. It's time to get right with God. You need to leave your past behind. You need to walk away from sin and walk into eternity with Jesus Christ. It's time for you to catch up with the plan that God has had for your life the whole time. If you've been running from God instead of to God, you've never asked him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, or you just need to get right today. You go, I'm messing around. I know I need to do this right, Pastor Jess. Then today, let's pray a prayer today. And let's commit, let's make this moment the moment that you say, I want Jesus. I want him to be the Lord and Savior of my life. And we will pray this prayer together. So go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. That you would come, Holy Spirit, and fill my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I deny hell. I leave sin and I'm headed for heaven, and I have a future and a hope in Jesus Christ. Today is the day that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you want to get linked up with somebody and you want someone to pray with you, you can go ahead and go to www.rockchurch.com and press the Get to Know God button. We'll send you some information because what do you do now that you've gotten saved? you got to find a local church. If you're in this area, I want to invite you to come out and join us. But if you're not, look for a good Bible-believing 
totally sold out radical church for the thing of God in your area because that is where you need to get fed, plugged in, and find friends of like faith. And then we will see you next time. I love you girls. God bless you.